Welcome to Money Talks. I'm Genevieve Westcott with your latest financial news from across New Zealand and around the globe. Coming up, New Zealand commodity prices are down again for the sixth straight month in July. Seems worries about the global economy are sapping demands for raw materials. Down too is the forecast payout for Westland milk products. How much? And where's the global market heading? Meantime, beef and sheep numbers are up on 2011. Good news indeed, or is it? We'll ask one of New Zealand's top farmers. Yes, all this and much, much more. Joining me today is Bruce Wills, president of Federated Farmers. And Bruce, let's start. You had a close call with a chainsaw uh, recently. <laughs> How are you doing? Gina, very well. And uh, I was trying to keep that, that story a little bit quiet, but uh, no, it did snuck out. And no, no, I'm back to, back to work and uh, lesson well learned, so I'll be more careful in the future. New Zealand commodity prices <laughs> slipped again uh, in July. Sure. Uh, uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, listen, I've come back a long way in the last 12 months, uh, admittedly from some, some very encouraging heights. So a um, uh, bit, bit of concern out there. It sort of knocked the confidence of, of some of our farmer members. But uh, hey, I guess that's the world we live in, and uh, we just got to to cope with uh, what, what the world throws at us. And this is a sixth straight month they're down. Uh, this yes. latest one down 0.5%. Uh, mm, sure. Is it just the global economy? What's going on in Europe that's uh, making it so uh, uh, dire? Largely, uh, milk a little bit different. Milk production uh, ramped up. We had those high prices sort of 12 months, 18 months ago, and and and, and there's a, a lot of cows in the world, and, and it responds quite quickly to to uh, price signals. So uh, that was a little bit of oversupply, but but certainly um, lamb, uh, beef, uh, and and wool is the is the really tough one. Back almost 50 percent. So uh, it's been, been a tough run for some of those commodities. Yeah, overall dairy is down 26 percent mm. over the past 12 mm. months. Uh, what are you picking over the next year? Listen, it's going to be soft for a little while, but I guess the, the hope that we have uh, is, is w with the drought in the US, and, uh, you know, we, 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 we you know, sympathy for, for those guys, but uh, they are reducing their, their, their cow herd, uh, so that's going to impact on dairy production. So, you know, medium term, uh, longer term, I think the prospects are still uh, pretty good uh, in, in, uh, in, that, in that medium term period. Westland Milk now has also lowered mm. its forecast payout from $6.10 to $5.40. Uh, oh, that's good. not good news for them. No, listen. It's going to be. It's going to bite a few farmers. Uh, most will get through no problem at all. But I guess um, you know what we are seeing is a stubborn currency at the moment, and we're seeing a lot of those dairy farmers, uh, as, as I think most uh, uh, viewers are aware, pretty high debt levels. So uh, there's going to be a squeeze. Uh, and particularly if we have some, some weather events uh, in on top, which often New Zealand does come up with, with uh, you know, uh, unfortunately quite, quite frequently. And so much of what we do depends mm. on what China decides uh, uh, mm. to do. And, mm. and they've now put the kibosh on colostrum. 70% mm. of Westland farmers supply mm. colostrum. Sure. Uh, that's going to hit them in the pocketbook hard. Listen, it will, and, and it's, uh, it, it's, yeah, we've been very excited by the growth in exports to China in recent, uh, recent times, but I guess that's always the risk when we're so reliant on one market for a particular product. Uh, if that goes, uh, goes west, we, we've, got to, we've got to suffer the consequence until uh, hopefully they'll uh, pick, pick the demand or we, we find another market. So um, it's, it'll be a tough, tough run for them. Now, some good news on the horizon. Beef and sheep numbers are up. Uh, you'll like this. Yeah, not much, uh, I've got to say. You, you know, it's been, and it's been a long downhill spiral, particularly for sheep numbers. Uh, so nice to see them stabilise and move up a little bit. But I, I think largely, you know, sadly, not, not entirely due to economics, but more due to a very favourable growing season. So people have hung on to more sheep, hung on to uh, those animals longer, which they may have otherwise moved off. Uh, so it'll be interesting to watch sheep, Prices are down quite considerably in the last 12 months. So, uh, you know, my guess is sadly we may see sheep numbers fall off uh, in, in 12 months' time again when that, when that same number is measured. Now, you're really worried about farm debt <coughs> levels in New Zealand. Sure. Tell me more about that. Yeah, listen, and I guess as, as viewers are well aware, I, I, I spent more of my, my life banking uh, than I have farming. Uh, so I have a sense from both sides of the, of the desk on this one. And I guess... Um, you know, when you look at, at the simple uh, parameters, uh, average dairy debt now sitting at $20 per kilogram milk solids on, on any measure, that's a very high level of debt. So we've got some, uh, certainly my organisation and, and, and me personally, I've got some real concerns about those farmers, uh, and it's probably only the top five to ten percent. Well, I say the, the top, uh, the the top in terms of indebtedness, 
Uh, and, it, it, and, and you predict that up to 10% of farmers could go to the wall. Uh, well, well no, no not, not go to the wall, but, but uh, 5 to 10% could, could well suffer some pretty tough times with this downturn in commodity prices, with the current currency being staying stubbornly high, so we're not getting that buffer effect that we often get, uh, and with... Uh, the weather, you know, we, it was wonderfully kind the last 12 months and I don't think we can expect that to happen in the next 12 months. So push all those bits and pieces together. And I guess my other concern is, is a little bit more medium term is, is when the interest rates turn around and we get another 1, 2, 3% on top of that, uh, that debt loading. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it is the elephant in the room. Uh, it needs to be addressed because uh, it, 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 it's a bit of a, a bit of a noose around the neck for uh, for those guys that have got themselves in that very high debt situation. And what do you think the new Reserve Bank Governor, uh, Mr. Wheeler, is going to do? Uh, he takes the reins uh, next sure. month in terms of interest rates. Yes. Well, I guess that's going to be that, that's, term. That, that's yeah, the question. That's right. Two point five at the moment. Listen, uh, commentators far more expert than than, than, than I. Uh, you know, the latest reading I have is it's uh, on hold till probably uh, mid middle of next year. But I guess that's going to be largely dependent on what happens uh, elsewhere in Europe and America. But. Um, we, we don't see movement for some time, but but as I say, if um, what we do know is there are record lows now, uh, now, and what we do know is interest rates will move up again, uh, and, and and when you move them up on on that very big debt noting, uh, it it's it's going to cause a bit of pressure. And add into that too, Bruce, uh, the price of farms. I see here uh, the latest uh, farm <coughs> price index. This sure. is developed by the Reserve Bank and by the Real Estate uh, Institute, mm. and basically farm prices have dropped almost twenty five percent since their peak in October two thousand eight. Uh, yep. To be fair, they're probably needed to. Uh, again, they got chased up with a fair bit of uh, <coughs> what I call false optimism in those late 2000s uh, and also chased by some pretty easy credit. So, um, and that's what's led to just the, the point we we're touching on, uh, the fact that the, you know there are some very high debt levels. So that's, um, you know, I, I think uh, high farm levels are right for those guys, maybe that are exiting, but, but tough for the young guys that we need in our industry to get in. So I, I'm not too concerned by the, the the status of where those those farm values are, I think it's certainly tough for those guys that brought in that uh, you know the, the the peak borrowed the money accordingly, and now it's back twenty five percent. That's going to put some pressure, but that's that's the way the market works. So. Okay, top tip for the farmers watching uh, today: uh, What would you say to them with these uncertain economic sure. times? Sure. Listen, just it's it's time for prudence, time for a bit of. Uh, I talk a lot about building resilience into farming systems, and that's uh, you know uh, not only environmental resilience, but but economic or business res res resilience as well. And that's about um, just understanding that we live in this, these very volatile times. That uh, you know currencies roar up and down, as, as we know in New Zealand, and, and these commodity prices again are up and down and all over the place. So we just we have to build in, I think, a little bit more conservatism uh, for some of those highly indebted farms. Uh, it is a different area. So um, we need to budget carefully and take a bit of care if we're going to have long-term sustainability in our farming systems. Thanks, Bruce. Coming up after the break, how high will our Kiwi dollar climb? Our foreign currency expert puts his wisdom on the line. Derek Rankin is in the house. And what's the latest slowdown on those crazy Europeans who wants money now? BNZ chief economist Tony Alexander puts his spin on the Eurozone woes. But first, with farmer shareholders on the West Coast and in Canterbury, Hokitika-based Westland Milk is the biggest dairy co-op in the country, next to Fonterra. So answer this in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. What's Westland's annual turnover on the 600 million litres of milk it processes each year? The answer when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you, what's Westland Milk's annual turnover? $525 million. We're back now with Bruce Wills, and we're joined by Derek Rankin, our foreign exchange expert with Rankin Treasury, and chief economist for the BNZ, Tony Alexander. Derek, let's start with you. Uh, markets continue to take a risk-on attitude. What's going on? Yeah, well, everyone's on happy pills at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so everyone likes the, uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar, and there's money coming out of Europe. Uh, still coming out of Europe, and so we're seeing that in the New Zealand uh, dollar against the euro, and that's uh, you know that's at multi, multi, multi-year highs. Mm. So we're seeing the markets take a, a, a risk-on approach. They like the New Zealand and Australian economies. They like the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar, and they're powering higher as a result. And the European Central Bank, uh, Tony, seems to be sending signals that there will be no breakup of uh, of the euro. What are you picking? 
Well, they're determined to hold it all together. Once you've committed so many of your resources over a decade and a half to holding this thing together, then you definitely want to, to sort of make it succeed. But I still see a, a probability, maybe 30, 40 percent, that the uh, the Greek Greeks will, will, will leave. But anything beyond that would be a pretty, bit of a brave call, I think. Everybody's forgotten about Greece now. Uh, uh, is that foolish, Derek? They're being ignored. Um they're too hard and uh, they've, they've, uh, they've broken many promises over many years and they continue to do so. And so I think everyone's exasperated with them and uh, basically hanging them out to dry at the moment. And just, just uh, the real issue is actually not Greece. Uh, it's, it's been a media focus for a long time, but the real issue is still Spain. It is And Spain. more importantly, Italy. Yeah. Um, they're too big. They're too big to be allowed to fail. So they have to be resolved in one way or the other. And, and Germany is certainly being a lot more conciliatory than it has been in the past. I mean, they've got their back, backs to the wall. They've got to stick with this. Yeah, they, don't forget they're on holiday at the moment. So it's northern True. vacation period. So they're all away on holiday. So and Angela's they, on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, even uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, when he, when he visited uh, just recently, he had to fly in to see the, the German finance minister on his holiday uh, home to talk to him. So, Boo-hoo. You know, yeah. They're, they're, they're just trying to keep it calm. Angela's got a, a, uh, an election next year and uh, she's going to be facing the German people and they're not happy with lending more money to some of these southern states. So uh, there's a real dynamic tension going on. Okay, now uh, we talked earlier about uh, uh, the high New Zealand dollar hit 82 cents. How high are you picking it's going to go before the end of the year? I'm just curious. Yeah, listen, well, uh, your other guests are far more expert than I am, but certainly the concern we have in, in, in rural New Zealand is the fact that um, we aren't seeing the buffer effect that the currency uh, traditionally has given uh, exporting New Zealand. Uh, so that's the, um, you know, that's the concern, particularly with, uh, I guess, our poor old land producers with, uh, you know, 25% plus of our stuff still going to Europe. Uh, and with that very high euro uh, cross rate, it's uh, it's pretty concerning. So, um, you know, these guys will probably give a better uh, estimation than I can, but, but certainly my sense is that... Um, we're going to see, unfortunately, these elevated levels for, for some time to come. Uh, and it's probably more dependent on, on what happens in Europe and the US than anything that happens uh, here domestically. So, But it's, it's, it, it's, it's a bit of a squeeze and it's a, it's a different pattern than we're used to in, in, for, for the exporters. Derek, we saw this week uh, the New Zealand dollar hit 83 cents. Uh, how high is it going to go? How quickly? Uh, and Tony, you weigh in on this too. Yeah, well, I think that it's, it's still pressured higher. I mean, in fact, in fact, the New Zealand authorities are trying to do everything they can to not, not encourage it higher. Mm -hmm. uh, the Reserve Bank's leaving interest rates where they are. you just got to remember that, that there's a weight of capital coming out of Europe, which is, is unprecedented, and that's mm -hmm. driving it higher. And then you've got the United States, which people forget is in just as big a mess as Europe. But they manage it better. And yet uh, some of the data coming out of uh, the U.S. this week is not bad. Uh, their employment rate uh, is a little bit better. Uh, uh, housing uh, seems to be a little bit better. Uh, how do you read that? Well, I mean, you look at the housing numbers. I mean, America has about 10 gazillion different kinds of housing indexes. So, you know, you can really... So you really, uh, you really never know. <laughs> yeah, well, you do. The, the, most of them are actually pointing higher. The housing market looks like it's bottomed in the United States. And you look at things like interstate uh, rail movement. You look at the trucking movement across the United States. It doesn't actually look like an economy that's actually really in a mess. It's just puttering along. Um, it's not going to grow fantastically, but it's not falling apart either. Can we expect to see more stimulus from uh, the U.S. Fed Reserve? Well, the chances are good that we will see some version of QE3, quantitative easing 3, but of course that means more US dollars sloshing around the place. The banks not really wanting to lend them and still the bulk of people not wanting to borrow them. It inevitably will tend to depress the uh, US dollar and so uh, the Kiwi dollar risks naturally rising against the, uh, the greenback towards maybe 85 cents or so. And the key element here is that when you get pain in your major parts of the world economy in Europe and the United States, the pain is spread everywhere else on the planet in in some regard, either demand for your exports goes down, or for New Zealand's case, it's a combination of, of that, the commodity prices, but also a currency effect. That is the way in which we are sharing some of the pain coming out of there. Our currency higher than would otherwise be the case against the euro, the pound and the US dollar. Now we've got uh, Ben Bernanke speaking shortly uh, later this month at the famous Jackson Hole Wyoming uh, gathering. And I see that he would like to now monitor the happiness of Americans. Uh, he uh, figures uh, uh, economically this makes a lot of sense. Sure. How happy are Americans? Your take on that, Bruce? Listen, it's interesting because we, we talk about confidence a fair bit in New Zealand and, and certainly I, uh, you know, we do confidence surveys within our own uh, family organisations. And listen, it's, yeah, I think it's a factor because it is, you know, people are happy and they're content and they're confident. Uh, they, their hands go deeper in their pockets as, as far as spending money. And, and we certainly see that in, in the farming uh, world. So, uh, yeah, certainly my organisation, we watch the 
confidence of farmers pretty closely to gauge where we might think they're heading in the next few months. So it's a factor. The politics are that, that you know, we've got the US presidential election in November. The closer we get to that, the more he's going to be accused of assisting the Obama campaign by helping the US economy. I actually think that they're still in the mode where they're promising a lot and they're trying to do not much. You know, they, they, they want to encourage the markets to think they're going to do something, but they keep delaying it and keep delaying it. And in the end, I don't think they'll do any more. I think they're, they're, quite, they're quite happy just to let things sit as they are. Yeah, not great news for the American people. And, and I see also in China now, uh, the, the Chinese are picking that growth could slow to 7.8% uh, this year. I know some people say, well, it's still pretty good. But it's, it, that could really affect us, could it not, Tony? Well, not aggressively, I think, at that rate. They're at 7.6% in June quarter uh, compared with a year earlier. The issue for China is more, I think, the societal stress with the corruption, with the difference in incomes that we're seeing over there and the way in which the Communist Party is going to address those issues in the short and the medium um, uh, term. For China, we're already seeing some of the local governments initiate uh, stimulatory policies, their own sort of fiscal expansion, and there is a very strong capacity within China to do that, cut interest rates, reduce bank reserve asset requirements. So I'm not greatly concerned that Australia's, um, sorry, China is going to have a hard landing, which becomes relevant for Australia. And that, of course, will tend to give some support for, for our commodity prices if they chug along. China's day of reckoning of major disturbance is still further down the track. How are you feeling? We're tracking here at home with the New Zealand economy, uh, Mr. Rankin. Since last we spoke, we see there's a big new fancy rebuild now for downtown Christchurch. Finally, something is happening. Yeah, I think Christchurch has been something we've been thinking about for a long time. You know, it, it's it's something we've been trying to factor in, but it just never happens, and we keep deferring it, deferring it, deferring it. And and the Reserve Bank, you know, that they they've been they were thinking by now we'd be starting to get some pressure from Christchurch, but now it's at least a year out. We look at interest rate changes. There's no likelihood of any interest rate changes in New Zealand for a long time. So it's just steady as she goes. We're just puttering along. And yet, housing is is a major problem, not only in Christchurch. The cost of housing uh, in cities like uh, Auckland. Uh, how big of a concern is that to somebody like you? Yes, it is a factor because I guess the uh, the last time around when we had um, uh, interest rates and the dollar pretty high, it was all about uh, the Reserve Bank trying to control house price inflation in Auckland. So it is it is an impact, uh, and I guess uh, one of our strong calls is, is constantly on on the government to uh, to, to practice fiscal uh, responsibility to to to. to cut borrowing to, to cut costs because uh, what, what we need as an export uh, sector is uh, we need pressure off interest rates, pressure off the currency so that we can uh, just better compete uh, with, with the countries we, we export to. One of the things John Keyes talked about of course gentlemen is uh, more uh, cheaper housing. Uh, do you think that's what we need? Uh, look, I'll believe it when I see it. We had the Productivity Commission report last year and back in 2008 the uh, uh, Commerce Select Committee report looking at the housing affordability issue. Lots of recommendations, essentially nothing nothing done. I don't believe we're going to see a great relaxing of the boundaries of the cities so you can see massive conversion into, into subdivisions, etc. Et and my concern is with the shortage in Auckland in particular because of weak construction during the 2000s, there is pretty much already a housing crisis developing at the lower uh, socio-economic end. And that is not not only where you've got people on low incomes, etc., looking to buy a, buy a house or rent, it's where the investors now are going as well. And this is going to develop into more and more of, a, I guess, a housing crisis in Auckland in particular, which is then going to start to generate a dynamic of how do we maybe shift some people out to other parts of the country. And stories now about hot bedding. Uh, Derek, have you ever hot bedded? Bruce, you ever hot bedded? You know what that is? One dwelling, uh, one bed. Uh, yes. You get to sleep in it for eight hours and the next guy comes in and climbs in. Uh, apparently this is happening in Auckland. Well, what do you, you make of that? And you use the other side of the sheets, do you? Well, I don't, this is the question. Do you take your own? Uh, do you take your own linen? I don't know. I suspect not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's interesting is that the Reserve Bank, at the at the minute, is not actually concerned about housing that much, uh, and the reason for that is because bank borrowing is just not aggressive. Uh, you know, the, the the level of of intensity in bank borrowing is extremely low. Uh, you know, the farming sector aside, when you're looking at the housing market, they're just they're just not concerned about uh, housing pressure at all at the moment, and. Uh, Alan Bollard was commenting on this just the other day. And so. this is where I think the farming sector needs to be a wee bit concerned. Just think, we've got the Kiwi dollar almost at 82 cents with the cash rate at 2.5%. Mm. When the economy's humming from the Christchurch rebuild, the Auckland shortage is more apparent, the prices are rising more rapidly, you then get interest rates rising. When interest rates rise, the Kiwi dollar goes up. Mm. That hasn't even started yet. Exactly. Okay, so hold on to your seats, gentlemen. We'll join you after the break. Thanks. Coming up after the break, future proof on the highways and byways of the economic world. As our experts point out, what's coming up? 
But first, agricultural debt has surpassed its previous peak. So answer this in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. According to the Reserve Bank, how much debt is owed in the agricultural sector of the economy? The answer when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you how much debt is owed in the agricultural sector of the economy. $48.34 billion, Bruce. That's kind of scary. And I'll tell you what else is scary. U.S. elections coming up, and they're worried about the fiscal cliff. Uh, tell me more, Derek. Well, you've got this, this thing called the fiscal cliff, which is basically a, a result of a bunch of tax cuts that are actually expiring at the end of the year, which effectively is going to mean if they don't do anything, taxes will be automatically increased. There's a whole bunch of benefits that are, that are there as well. They need to be extended. And, and so the Congress needs to actually agree to do something to actually fix this. And they're, once again, they're gridlocked and they're not doing anything about it. And it is a major problem and it's not being looked at. And a major problem for our New Zealand dollar here at home. Uh, Tony, what are the implications for us? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if they do nothing in the United States, there's a 4% of GDP fiscal tightening that's going to happen automatically in January uh, next year. And with your economy only growing 1.5% annualised in the June quarter, bang, you're into recession in, the, uh, in uh, 2013 for the US without much ability for monetary policy to do sort of anything uh, about it. And so if they go into this with no new negotiations, with no sort of easing off on this uh, fiscal restraint, you look at major downturn in the US economy, everyone gets nervous again around the planet, and that would actually push the Kiwi dollar down. Now farmers might think that's a positive thing, but of course it also means if you're looking at maybe 2% US recession, you get the commodity prices easing off as well. You get weakness in, uh, in China, you get feedback of European exports to the US is weakening as well. So there will be some change, but the, the talks haven't even started yet. We, we really have to uh, build resilience, uh, economic resilience into our farming businesses because this sort of, uh, the sort of fluctuations that, uh, that, that Tony and Derek are talking about is, is, is something that we, we haven't seen for a long time in, in farming New Zealand. And, um, you know, we do export 90% of what we produce. Uh, we, we, we're so vulnerable to what uh, the strength and the, the, uh, the currencies of these other countries. And, uh, you know, pretty concerning when you hear what's coming out of Europe and the US. It makes such a difference. A couple of cents uh, US against the Kiwi. You know, that can be a hundred, couple of hundred bucks per, per cattle beast uh, that, that you're looking to sell. So within a couple of weeks, you can lose two to three hundred dollars on, 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 on a good prime, uh, trump, prime cattle beast. Uh, and that really affects uh, not only farmers' bottom line, but income into this country. So um, it's, yeah, vulnerable times, and we just got to take a bit of care with uh, how we run our businesses. Derek, uh, before you tell me what you're keeping your eye on, how are we doing against uh, uh, the pound and the euro, for example? Well, as I said before, the euro is at multi-year highs. We're at multi-year highs against the pound uh, and against the Swiss franc. Uh, we're fairly strong against the yen as well. Uh, in fact, the only saving grace really is that we're actually quite weak against the Australian dollar. And of course, that's our major trading partner. So the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar uh, cross rate is actually, is actually helping us out a lot. Um, but getting back to that US situation, there is going to be a downgrade of the United States. It is coming. It's just a matter of when. There's going to be another downgrade of the United States credit. And people forget that a year ago, when they downgraded us, the New Zealand dollar dropped enormously that week. It was a real shock to the New Zealand dollar and the world, actually, when it happened. So stand by, because that is coming. Uh, if it does downgrade, uh, how low could it go and how quickly? New Zealand Overnight? dollar? Yeah. Oh, well, the New Zealand dollar the last time, I forget the actual level it was, but it dropped something like about three or four cents just, mm -hmm. just that day and then continued to go down over the next week or two. So it could have an, an ultimate effect of uh, six, seven cents. Yeah. So what are you keeping an eye on this week uh, moving forward? Uh, where, where, where is your attention? All the focus at the moment is on Europe and how they're going to get these, these, these bond rates down, particularly the Italian and Spanish bond rates. You know, they're, they're nudging 7%. They're around those levels too high. They need to be reduced. The European Central Bank has said they're going to do stuff to do it. And uh, we're hearing talk around the banking uh, community that they're, they're ringing up banks and they're putting in place dealing lines and they're getting facilities set up. So there's actually action happening behind the scenes. So the market's waiting to see the shape of the gun, just how big a bazooka is coming at them. Oh, a bazooka. OK, Tony, what about you? What are you keeping your eye on? Uh, yeah, certainly the European situation, as I've said for two years now, I don't know what I'm going to learn tonight about Europe. And I remain concerned that there's still, I think, on the part of the politicians, the policy makers in Europe, a lack of understanding of a very simple fundamental. The investors in the private sector that finance this overspending by Greece, Italy, Italy and Spain, etc., they want their money back. They see a bailout, that's fine. 
give me back my money. They see an ECB sort of a liquidity injection. That's nice. Give me back my money. What we're talking about here is the only way this gets settled down is a massive swapping of who owns the debt from that private sector into basically the European Central Bank, European Commission, bailout fund or whatever. But uh, yeah, certainly Greece you can afford to let go as, as it were. But when you're talking about Spain and Italy, the volume of money says it simply isn't there to allow that swap to go on. So there could easily be a settling down in the very near future. I think it blows up again before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Are you picking a bazooka too, or maybe a maybe a tank or a cannon? No, no. <laughs> I think it'll be, it'll be something that will please the markets. Um, but uh, we've seen this before, and then two, three months down the track, everybody's worried again because the Greeks still aren't performing, still aren't keeping their promises, and the worries will again be back, say, on the Spanish uh, banking sector and the loss of their uh, deposit base. Thanks to my guests, Derek Rankin, Bruce Wills and Tony Alexander. Be sure to check out our website at country99tv.co.nz for the latest updates on world developments here and abroad. Keep the faith. See you next time.